This bike has a lot that still needs to be done. As you can see, we got the uh, battery tray uh, placed where it's supposed to be. However, it has not been fastened down yet. So I need to fasten this thing down. I went to Ace Hardware, tried to get a few, uh, few fasteners. Um, I've got to reinstall the lower part of this battery tray here. I'm going to try to reuse the same exhaust uh, clamp that I've got. It's kind of rusty, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. If not, that will kind of delay things a little bit if I have to order one. Um, I hope I don't. I have a new rim on the way. As you can see, this rim is bent. Um, I've got the uh, rear calipers installed. Um, I also have the new sprocket on the way. It's been shipped, so that'll be good. And uh, I did a little bit of scrubbing earlier today on this front fork, and it looks a lot better on camera than this one over here for comparison. However, the pitting is still really bad. So um, I'm going to look into a possible replating of this uh, inner fork tube here. Um, a new inner fork tube is about 160 bucks, but I think you have to heat this lower casting here and I'm sure that's not very fun. So haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with the front forks yet. Um, obviously this front rim needs to be cleaned up pretty good too. But my goal for this evening is to fasten down this battery tray. I'd like to remove the gas tank, rerun my cables. I'm going to also install the new controls. I'm gonna install the new front brake setup, um, the new front fairing stay. We're gonna do the gauge cluster. And also uh, I'm gonna to try to fix this sticky throttle. And if everything works out, hopefully we should be able to actually start the bike. Oh, and I'm gonna do my, uh, my new lock set, the new ignition, the fuel cap, and the uh, seat lock back here. So a lot of things to do this evening. Let's see if we can get it all done. All right, so I've ran into yet another roadblock. Here is the seat lock for the CBR600RR. This is the new one that I ordered as part of a kit. And you can clearly see that there is a difference on the end of this part. Now, the lock itself looks to be the same height and everything. So I'm wondering if I can remove this and fit this guy in uh, to replace it. I think that I can. Obviously they had to mount this thing in here somehow. There's a little spring in here too. This one has a little C-clip that I think will pop off and allow me to uh, remove the internals of this. So if I can steal the internals from this guy and adapt it to this, I think we can still hopefully salvage this because I'd really like to not have to do yet another uh, return. So uh, let's see how it goes. All right, so after doing a little bit of research, I decided not to take apart the, uh, the lock set that I received. I'm going to reuse uh, the lock set that I have. Um, I tested my key in the ignition and it actually works okay. So um, I'm going to just get a new key and return the lock set. And unfortunately that means now I've got to get something for the fuel tank. Um, so I'll probably just be getting one without a key, just one of the twist off ones. Um, they make some really nice like black anodized ones that I'll probably get for this bike. Maybe I'll get a different color anodized uh, depending on the color scheme I go with for the bike. But anyways, I don't want that to slow us down too much. It's not a huge deal. So we'll just keep moving. Um, I'll go ahead and put this back together. The seller actually gave me, uh, the seller of the bike that is, actually gave me another one of these brackets that's a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to use that. I've also got some new mounting hardware that I'm going to be uh, using to install it. So uh, let's keep going.
so I went ahead and moved the tank off to the side. That way I could more easily access um, some of the parts in here. I need to remove that little guy there, that guy there, and they're gonna be used to secure this here. I also need to reinstall the fastener here. And uh, once we're good with that, um, I'm going to tilt the tank upright. I was gonna just remove it, but um, to avoid a huge mess, I think I'm just gonna tilt it up and out of the way. That way I can access the air box and everything underneath it because I need to swap out my throttle cables. So um, in order to do that, I need to access the throttle body. So I believe the air box may have to come up. I may have to look at the diagrams to see um, how exactly I can access the throttle cables, but um, that needs to get done before I mount this guy right here. Because um, while I have this piece out, I've got a little bit more room for the tank to move. So I'm gonna use that space while I have it to sort of, like I said, prop the tank up and hopefully be able to access parts in here. So um, let's go ahead and get this all situated here with the battery tray, and then we'll move the tank back and work our way up to the front in this section. just to provide a little update of where we're at i got the air box completely removed now you can see we've got access to replace our throttle cables i'm going to close up the uh, throttle body ports here just to uh, keep from uh, getting any debris in here i'm going to try to you know i've been cleaning as i go but you can see i've still got leaves and stuff that the deeper i go the dirtier it gets so i'm going to try to clean that up a little bit and uh yeah so i think now and you'll see that the reason i wanted to replace these throttle cables it's just rusted really badly and also the throttle is really hard to twist and you can see it's just barely moving the cable here so you got to really crank on it for for that to open so um, i'm going to leave those closed for now i don't want dirt falling in there while i'm cleaning so um, yeah we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on this i'm hoping that when i swap the cables out and I replaced this whole uh, right hand control, uh, this is gonna be moving a lot smoother. So let's go ahead and get to it and see if that fixes the issue. So after pretty much destroying my hand after pulling the throttle off the clip on, you can see there was a ton of corrosion underneath here and uh, this thing just did not want to spin. Um, so I have a feeling I'm going to have to just uh, basically grind this down or uh, sand it down rather till uh, it's nice and smooth. I'll put a little bit of grease on there, see if this will slide on easier. And then uh, hopefully that fixes the problem. Um, I guess it wasn't the cables. However, uh, a new throttle cable is probably, uh, it's probably due anyways. As you could see, there was a lot of rust on the cable itself. So we'll go ahead and get the cable replaced. 
we'll get this thing cleaned up, greased up, and uh, we'll reinstall it with the new uh, handlebar control. So after a lot of grinding, we have fixed the issue of the sticking throttle. As you can see, now spins like a top over the uh, handlebar here. The only issue is, is right now um, it's prone to uh, corrosion given that it's just bare metal here. So um, ideally we'd wanna paint this uh, with some sort of, you know, just a couple coats of black. Um, I think I've got some black spray paint underneath my toolbox there. Um, I think we will do that. We'll probably come back to it um, because I just want to make, I want to mock everything up, make sure everything works. All right, so let's go ahead and before we install the new hand control, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull off this front brake assembly here just to get it out of the way. And we'll go ahead and run our throttle cable, get it where we like it, make sure everything's functioning properly uh, with the new hand control. And then we'll mount the new uh, front brake on here as well. throttle assembly is officially fixed you can see nice easy twist but i tell you what this was a pain in the butt trying to get this lower uh, throttle cable attached under there without removing the throttle body normally i would just pop the throttle body up and uh you know in and out nice and easy however um it was going to be a pain in the butt since this rubber's pretty old. I didn't want to rip it out and risk tearing something. And some of the clamps are a little bit rusty. So I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could actually do it leaving the throttle bodies installed. And it worked. Took a little bit of patience and a little bit of finesse. But as you can see, no more hard twist on the throttle. Nice and easy. And uh, we've got our new control installed. No more sticking start button. So I'm really happy about that. I've got the front brake removed. So for now, I'm good, I think, to close this thing back up. Then we could actually uh, fasten down the uh, fuel tank. And I do want to replace my clutch cable as well. And I do have one of those here in stock in the garage. And it looks like the clutch cable goes completely around and outside the frame. So no need to leave everything open and exposed. Just trying to think if there's anything else I needed to do while I have this open. I don't think there is. Somebody in the comments is gonna say, why don't you change the spark plugs while you've got this all open? 
yeah, you know what, maybe you're right, but I don't have them on me, and the bike was running uh, when I tested it out when I bought it. So if they're good, uh, the previous owner might have already changed the spark plugs. So if they start to go bad, then we'll change them. So I think I'm going to start closing this up. We'll get the tank back down, we'll get the air cleaner back on, then the tank down, and then we'll focus on the left control, the clutch cable, and then um, I think I'm gonna move my way over to the back to do the exhaust, and then we'll do rear sets, and then we'll work our way back to the front. Uh, I still have to swap out this fairing stay. I got a brand new one. I've got a new cover for the gauge cluster. I'm not changing the gauge cluster, but we're gonna get that spider out of there and we're going to replace this clear portion here that was scratched during the accident. Um, I'm also going to be removing the front brakes and prepping this thing to have the forks uh, removed. And I'm going to try to get some quotes for uh, replating this. If I can't get it replated, I may have to go through the process of replacing the entire tube. It is Well, we'll see if replacing the tube is cheaper than buying a whole new set of forks, but um, I'm hoping we can just get it replated for a reasonable price and uh, that'll solve all the problems. And of course, I've got the, uh, the seal kit and the bushing kit for the forks as well. So a lot of stuff still going on. Uh, let's see how much more I can get done tonight. It's about 10.30 p.m. So I might work into the wee hours of the morning. Let's see. The air box is now reinstalled, so uh, I've got everything tightened down, adjusted properly. Feels good. You can hear no uh, dragging or anything like that. Everything feels great, nice and tight. So now uh, it's almost midnight and I'm getting a little bit tired, so I'm thinking that I might, just to close out the night, uh, probably pull off these brakes install the new brakes even though they're going to come off again or they're going to dangle um, as soon as i pull off the forks at least i'll have the new ones on there um, i'd also like to uh, install the fuel tank just lower it back down uh, i'm not quite sure what this hose is for it looks like maybe a vacuum line and i noticed that this uh, line coming off of the throttle body if i can find it uh, let's see this guy right here um, is not attached to anything. So I'm wondering if this guy here is meant to attach to this guy here. I've never owned one of these bikes before, so I'm still kind of figuring things out as I go. Um, and this here is the main, the main fuel line. And I believe there's a drain line that should be, yes, this guy right here. I believe this is meant to go down probably right through the swing arm area but i believe i have this drain line um, in that box so i'm going to try to find it if i can then i'll probably do some quick research to find out what this uh what this hose is um, what this goes to um, i can always prop the fuel tank back up again uh, maybe we'll figure that out tomorrow um, but i at least want to get it down so that i can move the bike back into place and like i said we'll do the front brakes and uh, I think that'll probably wrap it up for the night. So after doing a little bit more research, just kind of looking around the area here, I noticed that there was a spot for this hose to attach right here and another nipple right here, which is most likely for this guy right here. I've also got the drain line hooked up, so I just need to figure out where this dumps out to and we'll be set to, uh, to mount this tank.
So after a few cuts and bruises, I was finally able to get the tank mounted. Um, I used the factory hardware, as you can see here, uh, one on the back here, and same on the other side. Um, I was able to get the parts off of Partzilla, which was awesome, and I put together this uh, handy chart. That way I can keep track of what I bought and what goes where. So now that the tank is mounted, uh, a few other things we could do. Um, we could mount this piece here. I'll probably save that for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to wrap up the night by just doing the front brakes. I'm going to pull off this uh, front uh, brake caliper setup and install the new set that I got. Well, the uh, less used set that I got off of eBay. And that way I can at least have something to squeeze when I'm parking the bike. And um, yeah, I think that will probably wrap up the night. I got a lot of cleanup to do and it is well past midnight. So definitely time to wrap it up. So let's get that front brake swapped out and then we'll uh, close out this episode. So I just got the front calipers off, so I'm happy with that. Now, instead of putting the front brakes on, I keep going back and forth about this, I probably will start working on removing the forks tomorrow, so I'm not even gonna bother uh, with the front brake assembly right now because it's just one more thing to be dangling and in the way. So instead, to close out the night, um, I'm actually going to mount this uh, little seat. Uh, it's like a seat catch here to, uh, to help mount the seat, and uh, that'll be one less thing that I have on my uh, workbench over there. So um, should be able to get this mounted up here very quickly. And uh, that should be my night. And just like that, it's starting to look like a bike again. So it was nice to actually finally sit on this thing with a seat. Um, I just kind of mounted it temporarily just so it's easier to, to move around the garage. Uh, but that is officially where we're gonna end it tonight. Uh, you can see the progress we made. Um, honestly, I'm really happy with everything we accomplished today. I've noticed a few more issues with the front forks aside from the pitting. We've also got um, an issue here with the adjuster. Um, I did get new uh, stickers and a new, uh, stop ring here, but I just noticed that we've got some rash there. So these front forks need a lot of love. So I'm gonna be scouring the internet. Hopefully I can find a set that I could replace this with, maybe from another year, maybe an upgrade of some sort. But uh, for now, uh, that's gonna wrap things up. So thanks for checking out the channel and be sure to stay tuned for the next episode.